Hey guys, it's Rory with SearchandChart.com and this is the Nokia 8, the company's flagship, high-spec, high-end smartphone that you've been waiting for. Is it worth it? There's only one way to find out. So this is the Nokia 8, which is the company's flagship phone and the one that most of you have been waiting for as their sort of comeback device. And the first thing you'll notice when you pick it up is how well built it is. It's built really like a tank. And I guess that's not so surprising when you consider the Nokia 6, which is also a really well built smartphone and that's only their mid-range entry. So this one is a flagship, it's got all your nice flagship specs. It's got a Snapdragon 835 processor, it's got 4 gigs of RAM, it's got 64 gigs of storage. Perhaps the only sort of mediocre spec is the battery, which is 3090 milliamp hours, so not the biggest, but it's on par with something like the HTC U11, for example. Despite the rather small battery, uh, it does have support for fast charging, uh, QC 3.0, which is Qualcomm standard, and it does so via a USB Type-C port. In front, you've got a 5.3 inch Quad HD IPS display, which looks pretty good. Everything is really crisp, and I guess that's not so surprising considering the resolution to screen size. It doesn't get super bright, unfortunately, so you might have a little bit of trouble seeing it under sunlight but unless it's super bright out, I don't think you're gonna have a big problem. Everything looks pretty good. It's not as, say, contrasty or vibrant as like Samsung's AMOLED panel, but it's good enough as it is. So Nokia's got their own version of uh, an always-on display. They call it the glance screen, which you might remember from their Windows devices. Uh, it's pretty similar there. Also a black and white image where you get to see the clock, you get to see your battery percentage, and you get to see a few notification icons, which is pretty useful. So one of the big selling features for the Nokia 8 is its software. This one comes running a pretty stock version of Android. It's on version 7.1.1 right now, but Nokia says that you will be among the first in line for for Android Oreo update when it hits. Around back is the Nokia 8's other interesting feature, its cameras. So it's got a pair of 13 megapixel cameras with Zeiss optics on it. Uh, one shoots RGB, one shoots monochrome, and it gives you the sort of uh, same effect as the Huawei P10 and P10 Plus, for example. What makes it super special though is in front, you also get another 13 megapixel sensor and combined the front and back cameras give the Nokia 8 its so-called selling feature. They're calling it bothy, which is like selfie and wifi, but with both cameras, so bothy, I, I, I don't know. Is it useful? Um, right now, I don't think it's super useful. I mean, it's a cool party trick. It's very interesting in the sense that you get to capture both the front and back images, so you get to see yourself, your reaction, and what you're reacting to, which I guess uh, can be quite entertaining and there are a lot of creative ways that you can use this. However, is it a standout feature? Is it something you should be basing your purchase decisions on? I don't think so because at the end it's still just a camera feature and it's not a super super useful one. So I don't know, that's really up to you. What is good about this Bothy feature though is you get to stream uh, to live social media platforms like they currently support Facebook Live, they currently support Snapchat, and they currently support YouTube live streaming, which is pretty nice. One thing that bums me out is it doesn't work with Instagram Stories, and that's something I use a lot. So uh, if you're a big Instagram Story user, then you won't be able to capitalize on this feature. But if you use Snapchat, good news. Unfortunately, you won't find IP68 water resistance or even IP67 water resistance on the Nokia 8, even though the build looks so solid and so sealed off. You get get an IP54 splash resistance rating, which according to the guy who was uh, giving the keynote presentation, he said that you can spill drinks on it and it should survive. So yeah, it's not submergible. Is that even a word? Submersible? It's not submersible, so you might want to still keep it away from water. So one of the features I'm most excited about is the Nokia 8's ability to capture 3D binaural audio. So it uh, capitalizes on Nokia's Ozo audio technology to use three microphones on this smartphone to capture audio from uh, your surroundings so you get a really nice immersive audio experience or that's what I've been told. Uh, I look forward to test that out so stay tuned for that. 
And that's it, that is the Nokia 8. So far, it's a pretty interesting device. It's uh, hitting a lot of the nice flagship features that you would want. It's got the performance, it's got the build. And one thing that actually surprised me the most when I picked this phone up was its weight. It feels really light. I guess it helps that it's a small phone, but since they're talking about all the aluminum and uh, build that's going into this phone, I would have expected it to be a bit heavier. Perhaps the best thing about the Nokia 8 though, at least as far as Malaysia is concerned, is its price tag. The Nokia 8 will retail for 2,299 ringgit, which is a great price. It's a bargain, in fact. Off the top of my head, I think the only flagship that beats it in terms of value for money, hands down, is the Xiaomi Mi 6. And we all know Xiaomi is king of value for money. So for Nokia to be able to give you a smartphone with these kind of specs at this price point, consider me impressed. Thank you so much for watching guys. Uh, this has been my first impressions of the Nokia 8. Uh, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, uh, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and I'll catch you in the next video guys. Let me know what you wanna see from the Nokia 8 in the full review. And yeah, drop them as a comment below. See ya.